Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite presidents, Dwight David Eisenhower. He ran in the 1952 presidential election as a Republican against Adlai Stevenson and won a landslide victory to become the 34th president of the United States. He came from a humble Kansas background, growing up in a large family, and eventually came on to become a five-star general in the United States Army during World War II. He also was Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Europe. Dwight David Eisenhower married Mamie Dodd and had two sons. His prosperous marriage came to very well represent the prosperous times in America during which he presided as president. And now, let us take a look at the eight sides of Ike and discover who Ike really was. We will be grading him on an AP scale with a possible score from 1 to 5. First, we will take a look at Dwight Eisenhower's role as Chief Legislator. We define the Chief Legislator as the position through which the President has the ability to voice his own ideas and opinions to Congress. We consider the effectiveness of Eisenhower's efforts to pass certain legislation as well as how he dealt with the issues of his time. These areas of concern included those of the economy, civil rights, and the stalemate with the Soviets. Eisenhower strengthened entitlement programs such as Social Security, launched the interstate highway system, continued New Deal programs even though he was a Republican, signed the National Defense Education Act in an effort to better the American education system, and signed the Hawaii Admission Act. However, he did not adequately push for the passage of legislation banning segregation among blacks and whites. Eisenhower was a successful legislative leader and passed much legislation throughout his term. Unfortunately, we do not feel that he pursued civil rights as fervently as we would have wished. As chief executive, the president is responsible for administering the laws and affairs of the United States. During his term, Eisenhower was able to increase the size of the White House staff, create new positions such as the National Security Advisor and the White House Chief of Staff, meet with his cabinet and the National Security Council on a weekly basis, and appoint five judges to the Supreme Court, including Chief Justice Earl Warren. However, his lack of political experience forced him to rely heavily on his advisors, especially Secretary of State John Foster Dulles. As stated in Article 2 of the Constitution, the President shall be Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States, and of the militia of the several states. This essentially means that the president shall serve as the highmost leader of all the armed services of the United States. Eisenhower had much prior military experience due to his position as a five-star general. He oversaw the signing of the Armistice Agreement, which ended fighting between North and South Korea. He also ordered the 101st Airborne Division to Little Rock, Arkansas, to enforce the integration of the Little Rock Nine at Central High School. In 1958, he sent troops to Beirut to aid Lebanese government. This was taken as a step to honor the Eisenhower Doctrine. He also reinforced John Foster Dulles' plan of massive retaliation. As he is viewed by many as the patriarch of the nation, the president is responsible for controlling unemployment, high prices, inflation, taxes, and the overall financial prosperity of the country. The president is not able to directly control the economy, but nonetheless, the public expects him to ensure economic well-being. Make it rain. Eisenhower oversaw a period of immense economic growth and the average lifestyle of the American improved. However, he was against a federalized health care system and refused to allow tax cuts. Due to his position as leader of his political party, the president is frequently called upon to help members of his party become elected. Eisenhower was the first president to serve when both houses of Congress were controlled by the opposite party. Therefore, he was forced to work across the aisle with the Democrats and negotiate with bipartisanship.
This position is reflective of the President's role as Head of State. This is due to the fact that, as the Chief Diplomat, the President is expected to interact with other Heads of State. Eisenhower's military experience made him extremely involved in foreign affairs, and he adopted a New Look policy. One of his main goals was the containment of communism, and he participated in the creation of the Eisenhower Doctrine, which stipulated that a nation could request economic and military assistance from the United States if it was under attack by a communist nation. He also wanted to improve relations with the Soviet Union. He traveled to the Korean Peninsula and helped to conclude peace talks between the North and the South, and oversaw the separation of the Korean Peninsula into the North and South Korea. Check out this cool ball I have. It has all my favorite presidents on it. I see Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt. And look at that! It's Eisenhower! Now when I look at all these presidents, I see lush, full heads of hair. Then I look at Eisenhower, and he's just lacking in that category. For baldness, Eisenhower gets a five.